Hi, it's Bean. Welcome back to my channel. I'm always on here looking real crazy. <laughs> so, I'm going to read something out of this book. I read stuff out of here before. It's Overcoming Tough Times. God's Answers to Every Situation. I bought this book at Walmart. Like, I don't know, two years ago, year and a half ago. I don't think I read this already when I read out of this, but if I did, I'm sorry. But here it goes. All right. Guarding your thoughts. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is any praise, dwell on those things. Philippians 4, 8. Are you, op are you an optimistic, hopeful, enthusiastic Christian? After all, as a believer, you have every reason to be optimistic about life on earth and life internal. An English clergyman, William Ralph Ng, observed, No Christian should be a pessimist, for Christianity is a system of radical optimism. Ng's words are most certainly true, but at times you may find yourself pulled down by tough times. If you find yourself discouraged, exhausted, or both, then it's time to ask yourself this question, what's bothering you and why? If you're worried by the inevitable changes of everyday living, God wants to have a little talk with you. After all, the ultimate battle has already been won on the cross of Calvary. If your life has been transformed by Christ's sacrifice, then you, as a recipient of God's grace, have every reason to live courageously. Are you willing to trust God's plan for your life in good times and hard times? Hopefully you will trust him completely. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Make it clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. A. W. Tower, Towser noted, attitude is all important. Let the soul take a quiet moment. No, let the soul take a quiet attitude of faith and love towards God. And from there on, the responsibility is God's. He will make good on his commitments. These words serve as a reminder that even when the challenges of the day seem daunting, God will remain steadfast. So make the promise to yourself and keep it. Vow to hope, vow to be a hopeful Christian. Think optimistic, optimistically about your life, your prof professions, your family, your future, and your purpose for living. Trust your hopes, not your fears. Take time to celebrate God's glorious creation. And then, when you filled your heart with hope, and gladness, share your optimism with others. They'll be better for it, and so will you. And then after that, there's like just some phrases and quotes from people and stuff in the Bible. So prepare your mind for service and have self-control. That's from 1 Peter 1.13. Come near to God, and God will come near to you. You sinners, clean sin out of your lives. You who are trying to follow God in the world at the same time, make your thinking pure. James 4, 8. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's Romans 12, 2. I love that one. It is the tough, it is the thoughts and intents of the heart that shape a person's life. Now these are just quotes. I became aware of one very important concept I had missed before. My attitude, not my circumstances, was what was making me unhappy. That's really deep. <laughs> attitude is the mind's paintbrush. It can color any situation. Your thoughts are the determined your thoughts are the determining factor as to whose mold you are conformed to. Control your thoughts and you control the direction of your life. The things we think the things we think are the things that feed our souls. 
If we think on pure and lovely things, we shall grow pure and lovely like them. And the converse is equally true. A tip, a tip for tough times. Be a realistic optimist. Your attitude towards the future will help create your future. So think realistically about yourself and your situation while making a conscious effort to focus on hopes, not fears. When you do, you'll put the self-fulfilling prophecy to work for you. Questions to consider. Do I understand the importance of directing my thoughts in a proper direction? Do I believe that emotions are contagious and do I try to associate with people who are upbeat, optimistic, and encouraging? Do I understand that when I dwell on positive thoughts, I feel better about my circumstances? Dear Lord, I will focus on your love, your power, your promises, and your son. When I am weak, I will turn to you for strength. When I am worried, I will turn to you for comfort. When I am troubled, I will turn to you for patience and perspective. Help me guard my thoughts, Lord, so that I may honor you this day and forever. Amen. This book is great. I've read it so many times, like over and over and over. I mean, it's pretty small. <laughs> pretty small. It's not hard to read <laughs> over and over and over. I know if you like that, you might want to watch it a couple more times just to hear it. But it's a great book. You know, just a little food for thought, you know, feed your mind, your body, your spirit, good and positive energy, positive things, you know, because it matters what you put in your mind and in your body matters at the end of the day of who you are today, who you are going to be, who are you trying to be. So if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe. I'm going to keep it real short and simple. It's hot. I need to open my windows back up. <laughs> Get the book. Go to go to Walmart. I think they probably still have it. If not, order it online. This is like a nice leather. Look at the tree. It's so pretty. It's like a tree of life. Or maybe it's not, but it looks like it anyway. Anyway, like, share, and subscribe. Take care of your mind, your body, and your spirit. Love you guys and gals. See ya.